Hello, everybody. I am Cheryl Todd from Gun Freedom Radio. All right. Now that I got that out of my system, we can get down to work. So you see the sign behind me? Freedom now. Why do you think we have to say that out loud? It is because there are far too many, even those in this room, who are passionate patriots, who took time out of their life to be here today, who have a very casual attitude towards demanding their freedom. And we need to stop that and demand our freedom now. So I want to share with you today why I carry a firearm and why I am a passionate and powerful supporter of defending and restoring every single syllable of the Second Amendment because I'm demanding my freedom now. I recently attended a panel discussion. Now get this topic. It was on assault and violence response. Right? So I want you to think about those words as I talk to you. The panel was made up of police officers, social workers, a sex crimes prosecutor, and a domestic violence shelter for women and children victims. These professionals are all fine people, all well-meaning people, very serious in their professions, but all of whom are only there for you or for me, after we have been victims of violence and assault. For two hours, I listened to well-thought-out after-action reports from each of these people. They know that assault and violence are going to happen because each have their own area of expertise to deal with it afterwards. Yet never once did I hear them tell how we can respond to prevent violence and assault in the first place. Their captive audience were looking to the professionals for help, for information. They never ever once heard that 200,000 times every year women prevent violence, and assault by being responsibly armed citizens. This is why I carry. This is why I have instilled in my daughter, and she will train her two young daughters, to do the very same things. Our family will have a legacy that our founding fathers constitutionally protected all those 200 plus years ago in the right and the necessity to keep and bear arms. During that panel, I listened to words piled on top of words about how we can help women, mostly, but men as well, after they have been violently attacked and or raped. In each of the minds of the panelists, the only response is to wait for people's lives, men and women, children's lives, to be shattered and upended by a violent attack. One panelist even shared with us about someone who is going through the process from victim to survivor. This person left, was left by her attacker being disconnected from her own sense of self, her own body. Her healing involves learning to trust her own body again. Her arms, her hands, her legs have become foreign objects to her. I cannot imagine what greater theft there could ever be than robbing someone of their own being, their own sense 
of self. Yet every single day, we are robbed of the rights we have to prevent this from becoming our own stories. We hear women tell other women that guns, the very thing, the very tool of self-defense that prevents violent attacks and rape 200,000 times a year, are just not for us. That moms, you know, good moms, they don't have those bad objects in their homes. Another panelist spoke of how the victim is always blamed for the attack in courts, in personal conversations, in thinly veiled questions about what were they wearing and why were that at, at that party in the first place. The very same people who tell us not to protect and defend ourselves, the very same people who march and scream for the government to rob us of our rights to self-defense are the ones who will blame us when we have been brutalized, raped, or murdered because we were unarmed, disarmed, and defenseless when our response to assault and violence required us to be armed. And I am rapping, I promise. <laughs> and as I do, I want to remind you that you are your own first responder. In the immediacy of assault and violence, you will be responding to what is happening to you. And all those other people, those well-meaning people, they will come and help later, but not prevent. And this is why we must, in every city, in every state, demand freedom now. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Thank you.